What's up, folks? It's Invisible Walls, episode 106, right here at GameTrailers.com. What a good day it is to play video games, and here to talk about video games is Miguel Lopez. Hello. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say Miguel Lopez, our mama. <laughs> You're wait, waiting for your yeah, waiting for your adjectives. Yeah. Hi guys. Sorry about that. Brian Stevens. Yes, I am here in present. Justin Spear. Yeah, I'm here too. And me. Everyone's here. <laughs> and me, Shane Satterfield. I apologize. My allergies have been kicking my ass lately, so my nose or my uh, voice is even more nasally than usual. But we'll try to fight through it. Got a big show. Let's get straight to it. And some Halo giveaways later on. In a horror story, the victim keeps asking why, but there can be no explanation, and there shouldn't be one. The unanswered mystery is what stays with us the longest. All right, so the first thing I'm going to say about this game that we're about to talk about is it's about damn time. Alan, the break, wait, forth, I, I didn't the know this and the rhyme. <laughs> I don't know if this game would ever come out, ever. Yeah, I, the first time I saw it was at X06 in 2006. Wow. And wow. Yeah, Here it, we are four years later. Right, and that wasn't even when it was announced. That, I think that was the first time they showed it. No, no, it was at, it was at X05. It was there there's, too. there's trailers from 05, I'm pretty sure. Right. Like, well, yeah, it's been it's been. And here we are five years later. Yeah. Remedy does have a much smaller team than a lot of studios. I think they have only like 40, 45 full-time employees compared I, to like, you know, usually around 100. But still, five years is a... That's a, that's like that's some Duke Nukem shit we're talking about. Did, yeah. did you guys ever get the feeling that they were trying to release that as an episodic game, but that that model never took off like they might you know thought it might i mean looking at how the game turned out maybe yeah i think it might have been a case i mean if you look at episodic games though there haven't been that many examples but the few that we do have haven't done that well. yeah i mean sins episodes never made it to episode two yeah right. <laughs> telltale does okay but they sell subscriptions that siren game they released it episodically but all at once you yeah. know whatever, yeah, which was ridiculous whatever the case though like that structure serves it really well if it were released like that, if every one of those episodes were something you paid five, ten bucks for, I think it's it would be satisfying. They have a, a discrete beginning and end. Every are there cliffhangers at the end of each episode? Uh, not really. Um, n- nothing too intense, anyway. It's more like uh, in most games, a level ends and the next one starts pretty much right where you left off. In this one, the game kind of takes you where it needs to. So you'll end a level in some crazy place full of darkness and demons and shit, and then the next one will start. You know, Literally shit? Or? And shit, yeah, big piles of it. Okay. Because really, I mean, that would be the best clue that they had originally Ooh. tried to do this episodically, is if at the end of each episode there was some crazy thing that happened that you're like, you can't wait to start the next one. Right. Well, I yeah. asked them if they, you know, Alone in the Dark did this sort of similar game, horror. They did the same TV episode thing. And I Previously asked, on yeah, Blah Blah Blah. Right. I asked them, you know, I asked if they, I just did an interview and I asked if they were influenced. And of course they said no. And they'd been but planning you know it they from was. The beginning. Well, they said they were planning it to do it like this from the beginning. I remember them so. talking about this from the beginning. Yeah. You know, ever, even before that game ever came out. Yeah, it seems like they're trying to follow <clears> the Lost <throat> formula. Everyone's trying to capture that lightning in a bottle. Right. So let's talk about the game. I thought the game would be something you know not not exactly like it but something closer to heavy rain where more puzzle solving conversation interaction yeah and there is there is i mean there is there is a bit of that and surprisingly it it doesn't just feel the worst executions of that kind of style it makes you feel like you're just in a cut scene where you can walk around it doesn't really feel like that in alan wake they they kind of pace them better and the scenery changes as you're going through those scenarios where, you know, you're kind of kept interesting by maybe maybe something that the NPC is doing, maybe something that's happening a bit further off. So that stuff is well done. But, yeah, the game is it's a straight-up action game, I think. You know, it's, it's, it's a, a, an action game in the, in, in, in the sense of the more modern Resident Evil games where you, you still have to be mindful of conservation. You know, you still feel as if you, when you get mobbed, you're dead, you know, but it's still, like, hard-hitting the guns feel explosive. You got all these crazy items to use to like incinerate all the zombies. Well, they're not zombies, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Close enough. Hillbillies, as you like, you call them in the review. Yeah, hillbillies. <laughs> now, is this Tea party members. <laughs> oh, oh. Now is this game Luigi's Mansion for adults? That's kind of what it looks like when you watch like videos of it or whatever. <laughs> I think it's, it's a very different Luigi's Mansion for adults. Yeah, <laughs> it's you know it's 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 more yeah. like uh it, it's it's really like like the Resident Evil games without cover but with a different mechanic to light you know, 
Um, rather than scurrying to a piece of cover when you're getting mobbed, you'll flash your light or you'll drop a flare and that'll scatter them. And then that allows you to reposition yourself to survive the encounter. Um, so it's kind of like that. It's, you know, I, I hate to use the term because it's it's really played out, but it's really visceral, you know, like you're... Oh, it's like Dead Space, Dead Space and Dante's <laughs> Inferno? <laughs> exactly. It's a visceral game. It's a visceral game. <laughs> no, yeah, it's, I mean, the game, it, it's scary in that sense, you know, like I, I'm, I, I'm not the kind to get really spooked out going through like a, a you know, a, a, a rickety mansion in a game, but when it comes to combat and then some somebody's behind you that you didn't know was there and they get a hit on you, like that freaks me out. And there's a lot of that in this game. How long did it take you to finish the game? Uh, I'll say like eight or nine hours. And there's no multiplayer component whatsoever, right? No, there's nothing. At the end, they say, you know, in, under no ambiguous terms that there is going to be... DLC, I'm guessing? It well, says, DLC was announced. What yeah, does it yeah. say? It says, <coughs> Wake's Adventures in the Darkness will continue. <laughs> so... And multiplayer, flashlight tag? <laughs> yeah, right. Now, is there like a cliffhanger at the end of the game? Or do they sew everything up? Uh, yeah, there kind of is. Um, it's more like a like a, a, a WTF moment, like what's happening. Like, I don't quite get it, but Darkness. it's one of the... I don't want to talk too much about it because the story is uh. kind of goofy, but finding that out for yourself is kind of fun, you know? So there's there's the actually one thing I wanted to ask because when I, I played a little bit, I saw it, you know events and i mean the it's pretty much constant narration right mm. it, it kind of fades into the background to be honest it didn't really stick out that much to me but it'll be stuff like when it's convenient for the game designer to tell you to turn around he's like i searched a rickety shack but there was nothing here <laughs> and then you know <laughs> it's stuff like that it, it's not really that prime especially in the later levels when uh in some levels you know i don't know if this is a spoiler or not but there are other people hanging out with you that kind of takes a backseat. It's more for the scenes where you're completely alone and you're in these big, expansive places mm -hmm. where you're encouraged to go and like hunt down for hunt down more ammo or, or collectibles and stuff. They use it there more. The game exudes a bit of a Silent Hill vibe. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, I, I'd say that's the brand. I mean, you go to the small town, you meet the locals, you discover there's some hidden evil there. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely that, but it, it does have the sort of in-your-face horror of you know monsters coming at you because these, you know, there, there's no question these huge-ass dudes with chainsaws could wreck you, you know. But they're not real, right? They're just shadows. Or I get the impression that they're possessed. They're possessed by the darkness. They're called the Taken, and. Uh, so they're hillbillies, basically. That's all I got. They're, yeah. Where'd they get all those hillbillies? How many hillbillies did you kill? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, like a lot of the they game, you know, part of rate. it is in a logging camp. Another part is, you know, you're, you're, uh, you're in an area that's notorious for the poachers, you know? So it's all, it's all those guys. These <laughs> the poachers. Scary-ass <laughs> backwater The poaching dude. loggers. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, like it, part of the story, too, is uh, sometimes when, it's actually like, actually like the first level, you first encounter a lot of those dudes and you kill them and then... You, you listen to the in-game radio and they're talking about there was some shooting last night and later on you meet a cop who says, oh yeah, some guys got killed. What the hell happened? Where are the cops in all these games? <laughs> what the hell are they doing? Dunkin' Donuts. There's like one always. Busting kids for wearing backpacks. He killed. Like, where are the police forces in these videos? In this one, uh, it, 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 they kind of sell it to you. Like it's, it's a one-horse town, so there aren't much, there isn't much happening and, you know, the cops are kind of bored, but... Yeah, yeah like, there's... They're bored. <laughs> one of the cops is... One of the cops is... Uh, Possessed hillbillies running around and they're bored? <laughs> yeah. They got the work cut out for them. No, but one of the characters <laughs> in the game is a cop and she plays a role in, in what's going down. She doesn't call for backup from the stadies. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> there's a fed, too, in, that, in the game. Uh... I don't know. I don't know if we should talk about it, but yeah, yeah there, there's a Fed who's kind of a ridiculous character. So eight hours, sixty bucks. Sounds like a lot of fun. It's good, yeah. Um, I'm glad I played it. Uh, I, I, at this point, I've been so curious about it for such a long time that if I hadn't played it now, I probably would pick it up. And yeah, rent, rent or buy. You could get by renting this, I think, absolutely. And is the know. gameplay compelling enough that you'd want to keep it around for the DLC? Uh, yeah, I would, especially if they do. So as, that means it's a buy. If they if they do as good a job, you can always on, rent it again when the DLC. <laughs> well, who, who knows? <laughs> I mean, you might as well buy it. Who knows how many they're gonna put out? You know, it's it's kind of that kind of proposition. 
But if the DLC are, uh, if those chapters are as well done as the episodes here, um, and, you know, given how the story ended, they could kind of do whatever they want, I think. Worthy of a sequel. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I'd be excited to see what they do with the sequel with, you know, maybe expand upon the combat mechanics, allow you to do a little more, mess around with light sources, you know? There's, you could go a lot of really cool ways with this. And, yeah, I dig it, man. It's a really good game. <laughs> All right, now we're going to talk about Super Mario Galaxy 2. First game got a 9.8 on GT. I think there were some levels in that game that I felt had more ingenuity in them than entire other games. That's quite a pedigree to to live up to. Uh, we just brought in Mike Damiani and Daniel Bloodworth to talk about it. They've been playing the game. Is it going to live up to expectations based upon what you've played? Yeah, I mean... It's just fun just sitting there. I mean, I was here till like two in the morning getting through all the stuff we did for these gameplays this week. And in and basically the stipulations, we could do anything from the first three worlds. So I just played the heck out of those first three worlds and found everything I could. That's all we can talk about right now, too. So Yeah, I only meant to just try it out on Friday. And, uh, <laughs> I ended oh, up sure, staying until about... <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember it? at one point you said you were going to leave. Like, oh, I was yeah, like, I'm going to leave. And then I got to another world and I was like, man, I just can't stop playing this game. And I was like, finally pulled myself aside. I was like, I, I got to go to bed. I'm not playing this anymore. The first Super Mario Galaxy, when I sat down to review that game, my first sit down with the game ended up being almost 15 hours straight. That I played that game. I just you can't stop. There's something yeah. about that franchise. It's it's not even like you look at it like it's pacing where you have pacing with like an Uncharted two or whatever where it's like awesome action sequence. Here's some shooting. Here's another awesome act. It's just this l- slow burn. That yeah. it, it's like they've worked. They've done like these these psychology this- studies of the human psyche and like what needs to be given to you to just keep you on that breadcrumb crumb trail. It's it's. I can't even explain it, really. Yeah, well, it's a little small surprises just throughout, you know. <gasps> Is Birdo in it? I haven't seen a Birdo. <sighs> no. <laughs> but Luigi. So Luigi was the big reveal yesterday. Yeah. Or um, Wednesday. Yeah, basically, Luigi, uh, we can pinpoint a number of stars. Mike and I got him at different points. Um, but basically, at a certain point, he'll show up on the starship and say, hey, if you see me around, say hi. And basically, if you go into a level and Luigi's there at the beginning, you can talk to him and play through the level as Luigi instead of as Mario. Yeah, and, and I was actually noticing he was showing up more often than I thought he would on a lot of the different worlds that we were able to try out. And, you know, it was fun playing with him. And I, it's cool that they're letting you have like have at him earlier on this time than having to wait around for beating the game and going through it again like you had to do in the original Galaxy. I, I see that uh, scoring is back as well, that one thing i saw you do there was yeah, that's, there's that's a, pretty new there's a challenge uh in there and there's a there's actually a lot of different challenges that's kind of the, the interesting thing every level will have these these little portals that will take you to like a challenge room and you only have so much time in there and it doesn't really give you an obvious timer but you just have to like get in there and like try to kill all those enemies as quickly as you can and then you'll get like three one-ups or whatever were you able to figure out what actually gave you the star power up at the beginning of some of those because early on i was there's just a, a star in in some of them yeah. yeah i'd get a star and you'd be able to get it easily and then other ones it's like i don't know how you're yeah i mean the, the rooms <laughs> for those the rooms all pretty much look the same um but there's different you know different tricks to, to the enemies that you have to face sometimes you'll have to be using yoshi other times you'll have Goombas that are, are armored or, or have you know some kind of shielding, so you can't just get them with a bounce on their head. Uh, what Ryan was talking about was actually a little bit different. It was, you get a mail from this chimp that you saw earlier in the game, and he's like, "Come try out my challenge." And he's ba- basically you have to get ten thousand points, and the way you get points is just like in an old Mario game by bouncing on the enemy's head. So you have to like chain from one head to the next and use the little spin jump to, to make it through the air. To make a little it tougher in 3D, I guess. A little tougher in 3D, <laughs> it's yeah. It's definitely a new mentality for a 3D Mario game, too. Yeah. Like, you know, that was always something you could take out one enemy one at a time, like asking them, asking the char- the player to actually, you know, go for the high scores. It, it's interesting. Do you think it worked or is it a little... No, it definitely worked. I think, you know, once we get figured out the trick of like, oh, I have to use the, the spin in the air to get a little extra distance and it, mm. it worked fine. Any change in how the game is structured from a design perspective? Very, very much. Um, what, what, that's what kind of threw us off because when they said the first three worlds, we're thinking like, oh, the first three galaxies or whatever. But right. no, it's actually like each world is kind of like a Super Mario Brothers 3 world. Okay. So you have a map um, that's a pretty much a 2D map that the starship goes from point to point, And each world has 
like six different galaxies in it and there are branching paths that you know if you you know collect enough star bits you can go off to another area and, and find a world that you couldn't normally get to and that kind of thing it definitely seemed like they took a page from new super mario brothers wii with with the level like structure like that trying to make it i think a little bit more simplified um, yeah compared to galaxy where you had the the 3d hub and it took some effort to get to the next area to just access the stage where this time it's just right in front of you and it's very simple and easy yeah and there are also there seem to be fewer initial stars per galaxy mm -hmm. like you know you would get one or two stars and then all right on to the next galaxy and you know and then you might come back to it later so what's your favorite power up new power up that you guys used uh, I guess it's the cloud suit. Um, the basically it, everyone knows it. You know, it lets you create new platforms by spinning. Um, and it, you basically you get three clouds uh, per power up. Uh, but what I didn't realize until I started playing is that you actually need the cloud suit to stand on clouds. Uh. So they're you know challenging areas where like you know you have enemies chasing you, these cosmic clones um, chasing you, and it's all over like this pit of like poisonous water so if one of them hits you you lose your power up and because you lose your power up you fall through the clouds and you basically have to start that challenge all over again uh what i did see is in starship mario there's like a little museum and for every new power up you get it like gets put on the shelf and there are seven slots we only got three power ups and old power ups like uh, the bee suit and the fire flower they weren't going into slots they don't count yeah. So there's seven new power ups. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I like the the rock power up. Yeah. Are we allowed to talk about that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The <laughs> <laughs> like okay. Checking uh, our embargo sheet. Yeah. No. The, I like that power up. I like how it rolled around. It's like it's not instantaneous. Like you transform, but then there's a little delay before he actually moves. So you have a little bit of time to aim where you want to go. And I like how you could roll around into multiple enemies and kind of chain them together. And then you could destroy parts of like the level as well. So I found that cool. I mean, the cloud Mario was cool, but I felt it made things a little too easy. Mm -hmm. You could jump, like the, it increased your long jump and your jumps were more floaty. So it was cool, but like I like the rock Mario. What the about Yoshi? Uh, Yoshi, they do a lot of cool stuff with Yoshi right out from the get-go. And that's one of the things like I noticed because Yoshi is the second level. And it's already fairly advanced. Like if you're gonna just put this in front of, you know, like your, your girlfriend or your mom or something, or yeah, even a five year old, it's like there's a lot of bottomless pits here. And like Yoshi's, you're having to like point at the screen, you know, and use the analog stick and, and like shoot Yoshi's tongue out at these flowers to kind of like whip whip your way up uh, to to a higher platform. And uh, there's places where you use Yoshi's tongue to like pull out a platform. Uh, you can actually uh, grab. Uh, hammer brothers hammer and spit it back at him which i thought was really fun to do uh he has this little floaty jump he has a lot of uh unique power-ups uh in the form of uh different fruits and things so there's a there's a bulb that lights him up that lets you go through specific areas of the the ghost houses um or platforms only appear if they're lit up uh there's uh the blimp fruit that lets him uh just kind of balloon his way up to new areas there's the dash pepper which lets you uh, run on the side of walls and and go really fast and things like that and I'm guessing that you know as we get farther into the game there's probably going to be more Yoshi power ups as well. So you'd say they haven't nerfed this game at all. This no, is for us it's yeah it's challenging. That's why there's the Cosmic Guide. That's why there's the Tip TVs. You know because they are really keeping it challenging and and changing it up. I mean I think that's the thing I've noticed the most is like. You know, every level kind of changes it up and, and does something new, and then you move on. And not to the just next in the thing. generic. Here's the snow world. Here's the lava world. Right. Sense. Yeah, I mean, there's more 2D sections. There's you know more creative ideas, and you know, and and I, there's even Ryan doesn't really like these, but there's uh, even the the kind of uh, tilt flying. There's a tilt flying level in there. There's another one. No, of I, I'm okay with those. I don't like throwing the bombs at trash debris. Any <laughs> oh, of those? Okay. oh, that part. Any of those? Uh, uh, we did find one trash guy where you're just shooting uh, fire flowers, mm, okay. but it wasn't that hard. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it, it's more challenging than the first Galaxy, and uh, I mean, I think I'm a pretty good Mario player. And Would you say you're pro? When I say a pro, I'd say yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like you've already answered the question, but are you guys more excited or less excited for this game now that you've got to play a nice little slice of it? Oh, more excited for sure, yeah. 
Yeah, I definitely want to see what lies ahead that we haven't been allowed to play yet. And and I can say without a doubt, I am 100% freaking jumping out of my pants to play this game. Like, I I can't think of any other game on the immediate horizon I'm more excited to play than this game. So, won't be long. I'm going to dive in soon, and you guys probably won't see me pantless. for a few days. Pantless. <laughs> uh, I'll come back up for air and share my, uh, my experiences with you guys. But uh, looking pretty good so far. Hey, how's it going? This is Keith Abacary. I'm here at Game Trailers hanging out. And I heard that they had a King of Fighters 12 sit down arcade cabinet. So I showed up last night really early. And I'm getting kind of tired. I think I should go take a nap. All right, next we have a very special guest on the show today. His name is Keith. Apicary. You may or may not have heard of him. He's been making some videos on the interwebs now for a little while. Keith, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. This is a very nice place you have here. Thanks. Yeah, it's very fancy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the rich of uh, video game sites in this building. I like it. Now, very nice. Now, what, what got you started making videos for... Uh, for video games in general? Uh, well, these, um, these guys who make documentaries actually contacted me because I guess through a friend, a friend of a friend, they're like, you gotta check out this guy. He's very interesting and he loves video games and I think it'd be a good thing for you guys to film. So these guys contacted me and they were like, hey, we heard you're uh, an interesting subject matter. And I was like, okay, I've never been called that before, but thanks. And they showed up and they started filming me. So now these guys do this documentary called Talking Classics. And uh, people think that I do the documentary, but really I don't. It's just these guys show up and they film me. So, yeah, and then I get let loose at conventions and stuff, and they follow me around. It's pretty fun. Now, I think my favorite video of yours was your video from E3 last year. Oh, yes, yes. One of the, the, one of the, one of the days where I should have been arrested. That, that was a, a week where I was surprised I wasn't being arrested or kicked out of that You place. were pretty tired. I was very tired. I started falling asleep all over the place, and I started using, like, the Wii pads as mattresses and pillows, and that wasn't going over so well. People were getting mad at me, and I was, like, holding up big lines. There was, like, a big line of people waiting to play Uncharted 2, and I was just snoozing away on the chair, and that wasn't going over so well. But, hey, when are we going to do it? That place is huge, and I was falling down tripping over stuff, and I needed to take a nap. I needed to take a break. Now, but, have you been diagnosed as narcoleptic, or...? I was I diagnosed myself that day. I just dubbed myself asleep all the time, and then it crashed. Do you also self medicate or uh, with sleep? Sleep uh. is the best medication, I think, or hitting the ground hard that knocks you out cold. I do that. A I, lot. I thought SNK was the best medicine. SNK is is a good medicine, but that's not that's that's not for illnesses. That's like for when you're too healthy. That's when you get on the SNK <laughs> so they can thrash some buttons. <laughs> yeah. Now you also had quite an adventure at Comic Con. Was that last year where you met Peter Jackson? Yeah, that was last year. Um, that, I wasn't so lucky that day. I got kicked out big time. <laughs> I, I was roughed up a little bit. A guy actually hit me in the face. One of the security guards. But I think that was like his one and only moment where he could like do his job and be like, yes, I got a moment to like be tough and be cool. And so I was, I was being dragged off the stage very fast and I still had the cup of water in my hand. I was like, you know, I got to drink my water. That's what I came here for. And uh, I tried drinking it and he slapped it out of my face. And as he did that, he hit me in the face and broke my glasses. So wow. yeah, this guy was pretty tough. But, but what's James Cameron really like? <laughs> James Cameron, he seemed like a cool guy. He was actually pretty nice. And uh, Peter Jackson, James, Peter Jackson seemed even nicer. James Cameron just seemed kind of like bewildered. <laughs> so. uh, I, w I was also a little curious. Uh, did you hear the news about like Sega's kind of shutting down some of its its productions, oh, focusing don't... on the iPhone? Do you have any opinion? I, I know you're a pretty big Sega fan. Wait, they're shutting down like production on other games to focus on the iPhone? Is that what you're saying? I mean, that's kind of what we've heard. They've just laid off a bunch of people, at least in the U.S. Oh, I'm going to need a good dose the best NK actually now because I'm not feeling so good hearing that. I'm gonna need the medicine. You guys, you guys got some arcade games in here, right? Yeah. Can I just go tickle some buttons for a second because <laughs> yeah, I need a dose? <laughs> I, I don't know how I feel about that. That's kind of that's uh, depressing. Like once I found after the Dreamcast stopped and they heard that they weren't making the Dreamcast too, that was a heavy blow. And this is another big heavy blow. I don't know. Whatever. I don't. I don't have an iPhone. I have a Tiger LCD game. <laughs> I I can't call friends on it, but it's my friend. I can talk to it. So now, what are your favorite games of all time, would you say? My favorite games of all time, um, definitely Metal Slug 1. The first Metal Slug is awesome. The other Metal Slugs are really fun, but they start getting kind of crazy with the zombies and throwing up and stuff, which is awesome. Like, why would you deny a 
puking zombie as a weapon, uh, using your body and your vomit as a, a, a tool to destroy guys. That's really cool. But the first one, just it's just so good. I love it. It's just, I don't know. It's just because it's the first one, I guess. It's always the best one. I love Sonic. Uh, I mean, I'm into Mario and Nintendo and stuff, but I like Sega more. I think it's because I just had a Sega when I was little, and I kind of skipped Nintendo. From I went from am I talking too fast? Can you guys keep up no, with no, me? No, I think I'm, it's okay. Following okay. <laughs> nice. So I I went from Atari 2600 to Sega Genesis, and then shortly after that, I got a Master System, and I discovered that Sonic One and Two were on that, and I was like, this is cool, 8-bit version of an awesome game. Gotta slow it down so I can actually like you know, because sometimes 16-bit games on Sega it's like too fast for me so it's nice to take a sunday afternoon and play a good master system game is that blast you know? processing yeah the blast processing definitely blasts my processor away it's it's that sega genesis is the man he he's a cool guy i'm into the genesis and neo geo so i don't know if i was to pick like two three top favorite games i'd say uh um samurai showdown four metal slug one and sonic the hedgehog one do you like any modern games? Do you play 3D games at all? I, I do like modern games. I have to say that I am a huge fan of Trials HD on Xbox 360. Like, that is addicting. Big time addicting. That's really fun. Um, what else am I playing on there? I played that game Blur the other day. That was pretty cool. It was like a real-life Mario Kart for, like, guys who do graffiti and stuff. Like, those guys could get into that. Or guys that, like, you know, get girls pregnant. <laughs> like, they could, they could play that game. Yeah. They, they can keep their street cred. I'm thinking about like the systems and games you like. Uh, can you uh, look into your crystal ball? What do you think uh, the PSP Go's future is going to be? Seems like a, I think it's going to PS PSP go away pretty fast. Is what it's going to do. I mean, I have a portable GameCube that I wear on my waist that gives me like cuts and bruises. I like think, systems that are huge. I like Sega like Nomad. I think portable games the bigger the better. Like if I could walk around with a 50 inch flat screen TV and put some buttons on the front, I would I would carry that around. I think the bigger the better. So PSP go, eh, it's kind of too small. Now, what's next for you? I'm just always getting all kinds of junk, and I want to talk about it. And I also, this is pretty cool. It has nothing to do with video games, but I built an amazing fort bed in my room. <laughs> Some people have seen the, the twirly slide that I have coming off my bunk bed. Well, now my bunk bed is over seven feet off the ground. I built it on stilts all by myself, whatever, no big deal. It's easy for me to do manly things because that's the kind of guy I am. I have a receding hairline, and that, uh, that, uh, that equ equals out my manliness. The, the less hair you have, the more manly. That's what my mom said. I think she's just trying to boost my confidence. But it makes me look a little bit more manly. Anyways, it, uh, yeah, now that, cause now that I have this cool haircut, I can do manly things because I look like a man. So, yeah, I built this bed seven feet off the ground, and I'm, I'm building a slide. That's gonna come. I won't give it away because you'll see it in the episode. It's gonna be pretty awesome. <laughs> it's, it's, it's gonna be like a mini Wally World in my room. Chevy Chase is gonna be sliding off my bed. <laughs> it's gonna be awesome. Now I heard something about you're working on a TV show. Oh yeah, actually, um, a certain uh, network on the television TVs has been shown interest in me and uh, and now developing a TV show with them. It's official. I actually it was like all in the talks in the works. It was in the works recently or for the past the past year. I guess it's not very recently. Well, I guess yeah, currently I should say. What's what's a word? What's a word that works? Of late, nowadays. Of late, <laughs> now, now of late days, I have been working on a, a TV show, and it's official. So now I'm um, getting down to business. Gonna start writing some stuff with myself in the show. So look for that. Hopefully, it will go. These things are crazy. Like I guess you like you can you write the show, but then you don't know if it's gonna be on TV, and then you film it. You still don't know if it's gonna be on TV. Hopefully, it will go all the way through. But now, it, there's paperwork, so that's cool. That's cool. I, had to, I try not to drool on it too much, so I don't smudge my own signature, and they'll think I'm doing a show with Bleef Fla Flabby Gary. <laughs> I probably shouldn't draw attention to these things. <laughs> People probably don't even know this. I'm making it worse for myself. I'm digging my own grave here. <laughs> Any message you want to send out to the game trailers, Massive? Yes, actually. I have this friend named Allison Gazzoni. She's uh, back in Massachusetts. I'm from Rhode Island, and uh, she was my friend back there. And uh, she needs heart surgery, and her insurance will cover it, which is a bummer. And she has, like, a lot of medical bills. Like, she had cancer when she was in high school, and that complicated her heart. And now she's, like, trying to raise money, and she's a big-time gamer, like a huge gamer. And she's a babe. So it's, like, even alone, even if she didn't play video games, and she only, like, played with calculators or something, then, you, then people wouldn't want to donate. But now that people know she's a gamer, it's kind of helping, which is cool. I mean, it's whatever, that's kind of wrong, but who cares? It's true. <laughs> so, yeah, she's a babe gamer. She's really cool. And she's supposed to go to E3 this year, so uh, I'm trying to help her do that and help her keep playing video games and keep her keep her going. So yeah, I'm, I'm raising money for his heart surgery, and I got um, I had an auction. My uh, 
my uh, friend uh, built an arcade cabinet for, it was a custom talking classic ski tap uh MAME arcade cabinet that sold for like $1,500. And Zach Alphanakis and a bunch of other guys donated some comedy stuff. The Reno 911 guys donated stuff. So I'm raising money anyway I can. There's a donation site where you can donate money. And the goal was $8,500. And uh, she still has other bills. She has two procedures that she has to get. And she just went to the hospital last night, I heard, because she had blood clots in her legs and, like, the circulation. Her, her body's a mess because of this heart. So once the operation happens, she should be good. Then she has a couple more procedures, trying to raise some money. So if anyone can donate, that'd be great. Sorry, that was a whole ton of words. But <laughs> sorry to get the whole story out real quick. She now, where help. can they go to donate? They can go to the website. Um, it's, uh, the website is called Raise It Now dot com and you can i don't know if there's like probably like a slash allison gazzoni or whatever after we'll put the know. url up. if you guys can put the url that would be good then they can just go click on the earl and check it out so yeah 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 help if you can she's a she's a really cool girl and i love to help her and the gaming community has been awesome and so far everyone like all these kids are like yeah i'll totally help out and like i makes me feel good to be a video game player when people are that cool and they'll help it out with someone they don't even know and, and so. speaking of the girls man is your sister annoying or what uh, yeah i don't she's, think most people consider her annoying i, I think I, this guy might i consider her her, her uh, an idiot she's she's pretty annoying to me but you know it's my sister i i like her i mean i i deal with her because she's my sister i have to she's cool i guess but she kind of gets in my business, and she takes down my high scores, and I can't really have that. <laughs> For some reason, girls are naturally good at video games, like that I have found. Like, I have friends that, like, they destroy me on mini games on uh, Mar- the new Mario on DS. She's so good at that, and I hate it, and she takes down my scores, and that makes me look like an idiot. She's, like, 13, and she's beating me. <laughs> but whatever, guys seem to be into her, so that's cool. I'm happy for her. Just don't touch her because she's 13. So, unless you're 13, that's cool. And otherwise, um, I don't want to be around if that's happening. I want babies, <laughs> babies flirting with each other near me. That's disgusting. So. All right, Keith. Well, thank you very much for stopping by. Everyone, definitely check out the uh, donation site to donate some money to uh, help you. Keith's friend. Uh, you'll be seeing lots of more of Keith going forward. Very good. Uh, a lot of good luck to you, Keith. Thank you. Uh, good luck with raising money for your friend. Thank and you. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for having me, guys. This was fun. I'm going to go touch some fancy equipment on the way out. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to talk about the biggest story of the week, which was Bungie and Activision's little agreement uh, contract Trist, deal. French kiss. Yeah. Doesn't this kind of make the... And for those of you that don't know, basically, Bungie is going to start making games for other platforms other than the Xbox 360, and Activision is going to publish those games. Is it all of their games or just uh, one series? I don't. It sounded to me like it's a a new series. Yeah, I don't think it's. Oh, well, it's not going to be Halo. Halo is not. Yeah, it's a definitely not on Halo. But I think they could still go to other publishers as well. Oh, so it's not an exclusivity deal. It's just I, from, one particular franchise. I, so I thought I they had signed so. like a ten year deal. Yeah, what was that about? I think it's Bungie retains the rights to whatever they're developing. They own IP. the IP, yeah. right? So big news, obviously. Well, one, I think we can all see now why maybe Activision treated Infinity Ward the way it did the last few months i don't know i don't think we can accept it or understand it but i think now maybe we can see more clearly why we were like what why would you do that they're your money maker well obviously this deal was in the works for a long time with bungie and they sort of had them in their back pocket the whole time so i'm sure in some way shape or form it affected the whole infinity ward thing which by the way we're starting to hear rumblings that like it's it might as well be over for Infinity Ward. Almost everyone is left at this point. Heard the secretary is still there. And these are just rumors, by the way, that I just hear through various sources. But it sounds like Infinity Ward may just not even e- exist. They're not going to Infinity. <laughs> well, they're going to Respawn. Right. So things are going really <laughs> bad. Things have gone from bad to worse as far as the Activision Infinity Ward thing. And then out of the blue comes this Bungie thing. First of all, do any of you guys remember Bungie games that weren't Halo? Yeah, I mean, I played Myth back in the day. Actually, when I was a huge Linux nerd, I bought a Myth 2 for Linux from yeah, Loki yeah. Games, which Myth had the is, weird kind of like Myth anime, is pretty solid. anime cutscenes, and uh, the characters were sprites, but you could still pan around them in 3D, so they just had like eight different perspectives. I mean, the, and there was and I, Ani, I played some Marathon, oh, which was not, awful. Not Ani a good had, game. Which yeah. really is, isn't that the most recent non-Halo Bungie game, Ani? It could be. I'm not. I'm I think not it is. And that sure. game was pretty awful. Because Myth I mean, Three went to Raven, I think. 
I think it only kind of had it had cool controls and stuff. The tutorial but just was just fun. a game, yeah. it, and then the game, the game didn't itself quite was, work. Yeah, not great. But you know, everyone, you got to get your you got to get your break. You know. So how do you guys feel about this? I mean, do you think Bungie can even replace an Infinity Ward at this point? I mean, do you think they're going to make a shooter? Do you think they're going to make an action adventure? I, well, RTS. They already started as an RTS. You're right. I just don't want them to make another shooter. I, I don't mean, either. I mean, yeah. I, they have Halo. Halo's fine. And they've already branched I, yeah. that series off. You know, they did ODST, which was sort of a different spin on the shooter. I mean, they kind of have already covered that ground. What kind of game would you guys like to see from them? Whatever they want to make, you know. They would know. If Tower, they, they want to try something different, <laughs> they could probably, yeah. <laughs> I mean, obviously, iPad. you know, vehicle combat game. Well, I think yeah, there's almost enough. There's almost enough. There's almost enough of everything. I mean, I couldn't really say. Oh, I want to see Bungie's take on, you know, whatever. I what, mean, what, if they feel strongly about trying a new genre, I'm sure they could make a. Exactly. Yeah, they're talented dudes. I feel like, I don't feel like they're gonna, you know, just fuck everything up and throw away everything they were good at. I think Halo is interesting because I, I think people forget the, the stupid subtitle sometimes of combat evolved, but Halo pretty much gave us say goodbye to health, get ready for, you know, regenerating shields or regenerating health, say goodbye to having 12 different weapons that you can choose, you know, having some strategic d design for how you're going to carry your weapons. I feel like they really could like tackle another genre. I mean, there's some smart guys there and that studio has been around a long time. I know a lot of people just know them for Halo, but they have some like, you know, a lot of people sing high praises of myth and and uh, marathon and stuff like a that. A long time ago, though. I mean, you got to imagine. They, they at this still have. Point, there's a lot of turnover there. They still have some of the core guys, though. Um, and then again, you know, some guys went to go make the Shadow Run first-person shooter, which was not so good. But right. So is that a harbinger or? I don't know. I, I feel like they they definitely they have money, so they could definitely kickstart a couple projects, and then you know whatever you know does well, they could nurture on. I, I think they tackling a new genre would definitely be interesting. I hope they don't do a shooter. Who do you think's next to do something like this? Naughty Dog, Insomniac. Wasn't Insomniac the big rumor just a couple yeah, months ago? It's been thrown around likely. a couple times. But they times. seem so happy. They're, they're not even a second party. <laughs> Does Sony own any share of them? Are they a second party at all? I don't believe so. I don't think they have any financial stake. We'll have to research that and find out. But no, they're like the best employer of California or something like right, that, right? right? It's the best company to work for in California, I believe, is, is what they've won the last couple, uh, couple of years, I think, running. They've won that award. But I mean, I you know I agree with Damiani. I don't want to see him do another shooter. I mean, the other thing about Halo is that there are kind of little elements of other genres in there already. There's already vehicular combat, a little bit of racing, and things like that. So, you know, action adventure based upon Ani. Do we want to see that again? I mean, that was back when they. Well, that had... was. I mean, if you're saying you know, Myth was so long ago, that was so long ago. You can't. It's it's not relevant anymore. Ani wasn't that long ago. That was a it was 3D a while back. action adventure game. That was a while back. Been More than five years. They've been brought on to bring the Mass Effect killer to Activision. <laughs> there you go. Well, that's the one thing about Halo is that it's one of those games where you can just play it as a Twitch action game and be like, kill the Covenant, kill the Flood. But, I mean, there is, there is, a, <laughs> there is a wealth of backstory. These guys definitely know how to paint their universe for, for better or for worse. I've, I've read random pages from the Halo novels, and they're, they're, they're quite funny. But... Uh, they could totally flesh something out. Wasn't there rumors of a Halo MMO back in the day as well? Yeah. Maybe that got killed, but maybe they'd want to do an MMO. Who knows? Here's the scary thing, though, right? You know, Activision lost Infinity Ward, so they're probably looking to fill that void with another game of that type. So you wonder if there's going to be pressure from Activision to push Bungie to make another shooter. Yeah, I think they're going to... I mean, it's kind of how, like, id kind of, you know... Well, it was bought by Zenimax Bethesda, and they stopped uh, doing their shooters for Activision because they felt there was like conflict of interest. Um, maybe they'll just move Treyarch into that position. I mean, I, I feel like we rag on Treyarch, but I mean, their games are fine. No, no, they make solid games. Yeah, no well, doubt about solid it. shooters. You know, they just don't have that extra level of whatever that intangible thing is. It makes good games great. I think mm -hmm. that's probably the one thing I would say. But uh, you know, I don't know if there's an instance in the industry in the last several years of where a company handled things more poorly than the way Activision handled Infinity Ward. I mean, to me, that is the biggest epic fail in the last several years of our industry. I mean, more so than even the PSP Go, I would venture to, to say. <laughs> I mean, that's tough. It's going to be the big whipping boy for this episode. <laughs> the PSP Go. Yeah. <laughs> Keith Apicary said it was going to go away. <laughs> that's where it's going. 
It'll be interesting to watch, though. I certainly hope that Activision lets Bungie do their thing, lets them create the game that they want. I hope we don't end up with some Modern Warfare clone with them just trying to fill that every other year gap that Infinity Ward was was sort of supplying, you know, with Treyarch. So, well, you know, I mean, Activision has a big back library too. So, I I, I think Bungie could do a really cool version of like maybe Kaboom. <laughs> or <laughs> well, Stampede, sure. Pitfall, or that, that overhead boxing game. <laughs> it would be pretty sweet. All right, that's going to do it for this week's episode. It seems like it was short for some reason. You're crazy. Yeah? <laughs> Maybe I'm just having too much fun today. We do we have got those pants. <laughs> <laughs> We do have something special to uh, give to you guys. We have some Halo Reach beta codes. Now, we don't have a ton of them, so get on your horses, boys. And to those of you who skip to the end of the show, open for the codes, you're a winner today. <laughs> so, Ryan, tell them how they can get the codes. Well, Shane, they can go to invisiblewalls.gametrailers.com. Leave a message on our new blog. I'll private message you and i'm going to ask for your xbox uh live account and uh you'll get a code if you're one of the first dudes yeah if you're listening to this or watching this on saturday you're too late bro we don't have enough unfortunately but uh get on over there invisiblewalls.gametrailers.com get your code and leave fun. a message for on the hook as well yeah sure some questions, good questions. For on the hook we did not have it in the show this week but it will return next week so make sure you ask your questions there do not ask them in the comment section of the video Go to InvisibleWalls.GameTrailers.com. That's it. E3's coming up. We have some huge E3 news to announce very, very soon. Just getting our ducks in a row on some stuff. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Invisible Walls is up and out. Invisible Walls.